Hey guys, we are Sean and Christy. This is Long Long Honeymoon. In this video, we have a fantastic topic for you. Great Sand Dunes National Park and Preserve. It's located in South Central Colorado. It's not the largest national park. I believe it's around 160-ish square miles, but it's very unique and special. When you think about Colorado, you probably think about snow-capped mountains and that Rocky Mountain spring water. <laughs> Or is that a beer commercial? So you probably don't think about large mountains of sand, but that's exactly what you'll find in Great Sand Dunes National Park. In one half mile, arrive at Great Sand Dunes National Park and Preserve. These are the tallest sand dunes in North America. Five of these sand dunes are more than 700 feet tall. If you plan on hiking to the top of one, just know the most direct one is the first one that you come to, and they said that if you're gonna hike to the top of it, it can take you anywhere from two to three hours. Don't do it in the middle of the day, because the sand, crazily enough, can reach temperatures of up to 150 degrees in midday temps in the summer. So let's talk about why you go to Great Sand Dunes National Park. First of all, it's a really strikingly unusual and beautiful place just to see these sand dunes in a Colorado mountain setting. They're kind of framed by some smaller mountain ranges behind them. They're located out there in a very rural area. It's a destination park. In other words, there's no really town or development near Great Sand Dunes National Park. I believe the closest town is Alamosa. It's about 35 miles away. It'll take you about a half hour or 40 minutes to get there from the park. You got to make it a destination to go there. You're not just going to pass by it by chance. So I think you go because it is such an incredibly unusual scene to see these gigantic sand dunes framed by these mountains in Colorado. It's just a total surprise. Your brain struggles to figure this out. What are these sand dunes doing in Colorado? <laughs> And so you can go hiking in Great Sand Dunes National Park. You can actually climb all the various sand dunes. There is also a creek that occasionally runs through the park. Now the creek is really melted snow that in springtime runs through the park. And apparently it's a great place for kids to splash around and play in. The creek begins to dry up in late spring and by summer it's pretty much gone. When it's down to like the last few inches, like late June, early July, and that water gets really warm, it becomes like a hotbed for mosquitoes. So you want to avoid visiting that portion of the park if you happen to be there during that time of year because you'll just get eaten up by mosquitoes. If you're elsewhere in the park, it won't really be a big deal, but that time of year, I guess, it's sort of the perfect conditions for mosquitoes with that shallow, warm water. But if you catch that creek at the right time of year, yeah. they call it Colorado's natural beach, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> because you have kind of a beach scene there amidst the sand dunes. But for most of you, you're going to be hiking out there on onto the dunes and climbing the various dunes. A few things to know, it does get very hot out there on the sand. Yeah, in the middle of the day, like we said, it can reach temperatures of up to 150 degrees on the sand surface, even if it's only 80 degrees outside. So make sure you wear closed shoes, like you don't want to be in like sandals or flip-flops because your feet will be on fire. You also need to think about your pets. It is actually okay to bring your dogs out to Great Sand Dunes National Park as long as they're on a leash, mm -hmm. but you need to be aware that, that sand could be very hot on your dog's feet too. Yeah, so again, don't hike in the middle of the day with your pet. You want to go early morning or late in the evening. Something else that you can do at Great Sand Dunes National Park, which is really interesting, is you can do sand sledding or sand snowboarding or sand boarding, I guess is what you would call that. You can't rent those within the park, but right outside the park, there is like a gas station place called the Oasis and they rent them there. You can rent them in the town of Alamosa like for the day or for a couple of days and bring them out. Of course, you got to carry them up that sand dune to sled back down. But if you're up for it, it looked like it was a lot of fun. We saw a lot of people doing it. One more thing to remember is that you are at a high elevation. It doesn't feel like it because you're you know, surrounded by desert and you're looking up at mountains, but your elevation sort of 
goes from 8,200 feet to 13,600 if you're at the top of the mountains. So just make sure that you stay hydrated, drink a lot of water, bring a lot of, a lot of water with you, and then also wear a lot of sunscreen because one, being on the sand dunes just sort of absorbs the sun, and two, you're at a higher elevation. So just keep that in mind. They also note that snowboards and those sorts of things will not slide on the sand. They have to be like special boards to slide on the sand. So I yeah. thought that was kind of interesting. That sounds like a lot of work to me. <laughs> That's a lot of hiking. There's a lot of young <laughs> teenagers that we saw doing it because they're the only people that thought, hey, I want to climb that 700 foot sand dune with a sled board in my hand. <laughs> When you're in Great Sand Dunes National Park, there aren't very many services to speak of. There is a visitor center, you know, with a basic gift shop, but there aren't really any restaurants. You're very limited in terms of any kind of food services. Yeah. So you want to pack cold drinks, you want to pack a sandwich, some snacks. There is a small little store at the campground, but I think it literally just has like firewood and ice and some s'mores. So don't expect to be able to really buy any food or that sort of thing once you're inside the park. Again, there is that gas station that has a restaurant right outside the park called the Oasis. But when we were there, it was during COVID, and I think the restaurant was completely shut down. And even if they have reopened, their hours are only 9 to 5, so you're kind of limited with that. So just don't expect to get anything in the park. From an RV camping standpoint, there is a campground inside the park. It's called Pinion Flats Campground. This campground just reopened today, and pretty much all of these campsites have been reserved, so campers will be arriving shortly. But check out this campsite, for example, site number 34. It's a pretty large site. I think we could probably fit our rig into this site. And note this makes a point when you go RV shopping about what size RV you buy. The bigger RVs are not gonna fit into something like this, but if you have a smaller unit, you may be able to have this kind of camping experience. So check this out. Your view right from your picnic table is of the Great Sand Dunes. So it's really spectacular sight. Picnic table, fire pit, and that view. It's open early April till the end of October, and the sites are reservable on recreation.gov. They open up six months in advance, and you guessed it, you better reserve it six months in advance or you're probably not gonna find a site. Note that these sites do have bear lockers. There's actually a lot of black bear activity in this area. A lot of these sites in here are pretty tight and are geared towards tent campers or very small RVs. But a few of these sites, a larger unit might be able to squeeze into. Here we have a sign for the local politicians. And this is no hookup camping. I mean, basically right. you get a campsite and that's about it. They do have a dump station there at the national park. So you can fill your water tanks and empty your dirty water tanks before you go into your campsite or whatever. Yeah, and each loop in the campground, I think there are two loops, uh, does have flush toilets and sinks. So if you want to use their facilities, you can, but there are no showers. If you're the type of RV traveler who must have your hookups, uh, then there is a privately owned campground just outside the entrance of the park. I believe it's called the Oasis. Yeah. And they have, <laughs> I think, around 90 Yes. campsites and they so do. they do have full hookup camping there yeah and it's about forty dollars a night for two people they charge extra for each additional person i think but yeah it's the closest full hookup campground to the park beyond that the san luis lakes state wildlife area is right outside the park as well and it has about 50 campsites and they actually have electric hookup and a dump station but they don't have fresh water but the kicker for this campsite is that you have to have either a hunting license or a fishing license from the state of Colorado. For every person. For every person. So that's about $43 a person. So it becomes pretty expensive, you know, for some camping. But the camping is free, it's, I believe. The camping is free. So if you're staying more than two nights... You know, it might be worth it. But again, no fresh water, but they do have a dump station and they do have electricity. So it's sort of a weird 
mix there. Beyond that, you're going to have to go to Moscow, which is a town about 25 miles away, or you're going to have to go to Alamosa, which is the bigger town that's about 35 miles away. And that's where you'll find like a Walmart and gas stations and, you know, grocery stores, laundry, that kind of thing. Now, I loved our solution for camping near Great Sand Dunes National Park, and it was along a road called Lake Como Road near Sacred White Shell Mountain. That's right. Say that three times fast. (laughs) We were told about this location by a park ranger who advised us to check it out for free RV camping. It's boondocking on what is basically Bureau of Land Management land. Mm -hmm. There's this washboard road that is uh, probably several miles in length, and it was a really pretty scenic wide open area and it's probably about a 20 minute or so drive into Great Sand Dunes National Park. Mm-hmm. And I actually just really enjoyed hanging out at that campsite. I mean, you're kind of in this vast expanse. <laughs> There's no civilization anywhere within sight. Yeah, it's some great stargazing because at night, you know, the sky is just pitch black. So yeah, you can really see the stars. Not much light Milky pollution Way. out there. So it's it's really cool for that standpoint. The thing to know about those roads, probably got about a two mile stretch where there are lots of pullouts along the side of the road for RVs and campers. Once that road starts up the incline, it's gonna deteriorate pretty quickly and it's going to become a road that will require a four wheel drive vehicle and higher clearance. So if you're in a motorhome or you're towing a camper that is a lower clearance or you don't have four wheel drive, I would not advise going up the incline because there is more camping up there, but I think it's just more suited to people that are, you know, camping in four wheel drive vans or that have those sort of tents that go on the roof of their truck. You'll see a lot of people with Jeeps and razors in the area. There's another campground called Zapata Falls Camp campground, which is between the BLM land and the entrance to the national park. It's a BLM like primitive campground that's $11 a night. And we've heard it's beautiful, but again, the road in and out is really rough. I think at certain times of the year, two wheel drive vehicles can pull it off. But again, they say that you should have higher clearance on your vehicle. So we wouldn't want to pull our Airstream in it. And we've heard from other people that went and checked it out before they (laughs) towed their rig in that it was definitely for kind of all terrain vehicles. Yeah, they call it a primitive road. Great Sand Dunes National Park may not be on your radar screen, but it should be. This year, especially because so many people are camping, seeking out those less visited, less traveled national parks will probably serve you well, just because I think the bigger national parks are going to be so slammed this year that trying to find the smaller national parks that don't get as much attention will probably mean that you will have a more enjoyable trip and that you'll have a more enjoyable visit to the national park just because you won't be fighting the crowds. This park is unique in that it does offer the the sand dunes and then it does offer the mountains as well. There's one road in particular is called the Madonna Pass Primitive Road and that is like a 12 or 15 mile road that goes over this pass and has actual primitive camping spots along that road so if you're somebody that's a true like off-roader four-wheel drive camper that would be a cool place to go. And it's worth pointing out that if you're a tent camper, I believe you can actually camp on the sand dunes with a permit. So that would be something to check out. I think it would be a really fascinating and memorable camping experience just to tent camp back in there on those dunes. It would would be like when we camped in the Sahara Desert. Many years ago, Chrissy and I did actually camp in the Sahara Desert in Morocco (laughs) with the Berber tribes. All right, so here we are in the Sahara Desert. It is uh, morning, right about 6.20 a.m. People have been clapping their hands outside, which I believe is our wake-up call. This is the interior of our Berber tent. It actually, uh, it's incredibly dark during the day in here. So you could come in here in the middle of the day and it'd be pitch black dark. And it was a really fascinating experience. We rode camels out into the desert and we were surrounded by sand dunes. Yeah, as far as you could see, all you could see was sand. So this is the closest experience that I've seen <laughs> in North America, at least that uh, reminded us of that experience. <laughs> And 
And on that note, you really need to think about your clothing. You know, you may want to wear long sleeves and long pants during certain times of year if wind is possible to avoid getting sandblasted. Yes, and I think bringing sunglasses or some sort of eye protection is really smart because once that wind starts whipping around, you can get blinded by the sand really easily. The other thing to be concerned about in this park is lightning strikes. I think midsummer is when they are most active. They say to avoid them. They recommend that you hike more in the morning hours. I guess maybe lightning doesn't strike in the morning as frequently. Hmm. Who knew? But if you happen to be out and lightning strikes are happening and you can't get to a building or a vehicle, they suggest that you crouch in a low-lying area on top of a backpack or some sort of item to avoid ground surge from the lightning strike. So I thought that was kind of interesting that they specifically said to like lay on top of something because if you just lay on the ground, you could get the surge through your body, so. To conclude, you've got scorching heat, thin air, biting insects, sandstorms, lightning strikes, and little to no services. You're gonna love this place. (laughs) Beeline it there, people, come on. (laughs) Sorry, guys, that's a look at the strikingly beautiful Great Sand Dunes National Park and Preserve in South Central Colorado. We kind of paired it with the Black Canyon of the Gunnison National Park, which is just a couple hours away. So I think they sort of make a good pair if you want to make Colorado your destination. They're definitely both worth visiting. Um, And there's some great little towns kind of, you know, smattered about throughout that whole part of Colorado that you can stop and visit. Something else that I think is really unique about this park that I wanted to mention, if you are mobility challenged and you can't walk out on the dunes, they offer free wheelchairs, dune wheelchairs that you can check out from the visitor center and have a camping companion push you out onto the dunes. So there there are these chairs with these huge like inflatable wheels so that you can go out and experience the sand dunes with your family. And they have them in adult sizes and children's sizes and it's free. So I thought that was pretty cool that they do offer that. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. As always, thank you for tuning in. This has been yet another episode of Long Long Honeymoon, the long longest running RV video show on the interwebs. Hi, I'm Sean Michael. Welcome to the Long Long Honeymoon's list of useful RV camping products. Check back from time to time. You may find some new products listed in this very video. As you may know, We are now live streaming on Amazon Live. This is a new video service that is being developed by Amazon, and we're excited about it. It's kind of a place for us to talk about products that people ask us about without having to talk about it during videos. So we can sort of dedicate that space to talking about different products that we use while we're camping and traveling. And something really cool that we're going to be able to do on Amazon Live is product giveaways. And so this week, we're actually giving away two Jackery SG240 kits. This is the Explorer 240 lithium power station combined with the Solar Saga 60 watt solar panel. Two lucky viewers of our live stream will receive a free SG240 kit. How you can find us, you go to amazon.com slash shop slash long, long honeymoon. There is a follow button there. Click that follow button. You should get notified when we go live. The crowds are smaller. So if you enjoy attending our live streams on YouTube, I think you'll really enjoy the Amazon live streams. The content is very similar. The format is very similar, but there are fewer people there. so we'll be able to interact with everybody a lot more. It's a lot easier for us to see your your comments just because there aren't, you know, thousands of people and there's usually just a couple hundred. You can ask us anything. Of course, we'll be talking about different products throughout the live stream, but you can ask us questions about anything and we'll do our best to answer. Thanks, as always. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family. And until next time, what do we say? Lolo. Lolo.